This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, May the 5th, 2019. It's Cinco de Mayo, and it's supposed to be a festival of remembrance of the 1862 Battle of Puebla, when the underdog Mexican forces under General Zaragoza defeated the invading French army. But today, though, in most of Mexico, and certainly in the U.S., it's an excuse to celebrate Mexican culture, Mexican food, Mexican music. And while the Mexican celebration usually comes with parades honoring the armed forces, here in the U.S., it's more margaritas than military. If you want to look informed today, don't connect Cinco de Mayo with Mexican Independence Day. That's not until September, and it commemorates Father Miguel Hidalgo's Cry of Dolores, in which he rang the bells of the church and gave the pronunciamento, effectively causing the Mexican War for Independence from Spain. Today is the Feast of St. Angelus of Jerusalem. He was born a Jew in Jerusalem in 1185 AD or so. He and his twin brother John were baptized when their mother converted to Christianity. It's not entirely clear how old the boys were, but both joined up with the Carmelites and were ordained as priests. Angelus opted for the hermetical life and set up shop in the desert living that saintly life. Then he got a call from Rome to meet with the Pope to discuss an update to the official bylaws and the rule of the Carmelite order. He was as surprised as anyone, but he made his way to Italy. He was invited to preach at St. John Lateran in Rome, the Pope's cathedral, and managed to meet up with both St. Francis of Assisi, founder of the Franciscans, and St. Dominic, founder of the Dominicans, who were in the Eternal City all at the same time. He was the one who told Francis to expect the stigmata, the wounds of Christ that he would receive years later. And in reply, Francis told him to expect a premature death. St. Dominic probably felt a bit left out of this mystical conversation. It's hard to know what to say when you're rolling with saints like that. From Rome, Angelus, or Angelo if you prefer, started to make his way home, but in a very wandering fashion. First, he went south towards Sicily and became renowned as a miracle worker. And along the way, he met a knight named Beringer, who was apparently living in incest. Angelo preached, and Beringer's companion moved out of the castle. The knight was enraged and struck the saint five times with his sword, killing him from five wounds. An interesting parallel, considering the wounds that St. Francis would receive in the coming years. It's also a day of firsts. In 1904, Cy Young of the Boston Americans started out pitching against the Philadelphia Athletics at the Huntington Avenue grounds. 27 batters later, he had pitched the first ever perfect game in modern baseball. 27 up, 27 down. No hits, no walks, no beans. Amazing. In 1905, the next year, in a London courtroom, the Stratton brothers were on trial for robbery and murder. Crown barrister Richard Muir introduced a new kind of evidence, working from the scientific theory that every person has a unique print on each of their fingers. After two hours of deliberation, the jury decided this new fingerprint evidence was the real deal, and they found the brothers guilty. Three weeks later, the brothers were both executed by hanging. And finally, today in 1809, Mary Dixon Kyes applied for a patent for a technique of weaving together straw, silk, and thread to make hats. In part, she had the Napoleonic Wars to thank. The U.S. had embargoed all trade with France and the U.K., so the supply for hats was dangerously low. A New England woman named Betsy Metcalf invented the technique to mix straw, thread, and silk, but she didn't want to pursue the patent. And so Mary Kyes, with the support of Metcalf, made the application and it was approved. No less than First Lady Dolly Madison wrote a hearty letter of congratulations. After all, her husband, President James Madison, personally signed the patent. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.